every now and then you sit down and you realize that there is a person across from you that could very well be living next door to you and that makes them real. Thank you very much for speaking with me. My pleasure. So to start off, how did you realize what group of people you wanted to work with? Well, what I tell people is that, you know, I enjoyed working with these very aggressive adolescents, so I knew I wanted to work with people who had a need to express this aggression and violence and contain it in a manner that was acceptable and productive. And so I was thinking that would be similar to the population I was working with. Mm -hmm. The other side of that is, I said, I did some stupid things in high school. Mm -hmm. And I had friends that did stupid things in high school. And some of us didn't end up in prison, and some of us did. Mm -hmm. And so I had friends that ended up in jail. And so you kind of carry that on, this notion that these are you know, real people. But of course, they're statistic. They're a number on their sleeve, right? So um, you kind of hold on to that. So when I had an opportunity to start looking into what I wanted to do, um, I was looking around in Northern California, and sure enough, a position opened up in, the, um, in a prison up there. It was actually the Department of Mental Health at the time that was contracted out to work within the prison. So I would work with an acute psychiatric population who were prison inmates inside the prison walls. What did these sessions look like? Do you, do you work with people one-on-one, -on -one, in a group? Um, how much direction are you giving? Well, no, this is fairly early on. I mean, my, my entire career has been built on in one aspect or another of working with or researching prison art therapy in prison, but these were the early days. This was when art therapist was hired on board, and I th think it might still be the case in California. I was hired on board as a rehabilitation therapist slash art. Mm -hmm. It was the slash that was important here. And <laughs> so I was expected to run a number of art therapy groups during the week, uh -huh. but I was also expected to evaluate um, uh, inmates as they came onto the unit to determine what groups they would belong to, what sessions they needed. Um, and then I would co-facilitate sessions with the psychologist, with a social worker. So I would also be, take part in uh, substance abuse groups, or I would take part in anger management groups. And of course, I would run my own art therapy groups. And every now and then, I would have an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with an inmate. And so I, I started really examining what it is about art therapy that was so important in the setting. And I started to come to the realization that you're talking about an environment that survival of the fittest reigns supreme. Mm -hmm. Any disclosure of weakness, weakness and vulnerability is taken advantage of, right? And so, but, but, the, but you have other counseling groups and other psycholo psychology sessions and, and, and therapy where people expect them to speak and talk about their limitations, their vulnerabilities, and they're not going to. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they do, how do you know what's true? Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes inmates, you know, lie. Sometimes they tell the truth and we don't know what it is. So what, what I came to realize was that art and art therapy was so valuable in that it provided an opportunity for them to express themselves without having to leave themselves vulnerable and appearing weak. That they could use this artwork to contain the very essence of the, ther the therapeutic issues that they were dealing with. So my sessions would really be about art making, very structured in some ways, mm -hmm. art making. But there wasn't a whole lot of talking about what it was that brought them there. But that they were using the art as a means of self-regulation, of expression, of, self, uh, of, of you know, channeling their aggressive tendencies, and most importantly, developing a sense of identity. Because I mean, the best way to control somebody is to objectify them. Mm -hmm. And so how do you objectify them? You take away their essence. You take away their humanness. They don't have a name anymore. They have a number. Right? They have a uniform. And so it's easier for the institution to control them by objectifying them. So now all of a sudden, here we are saying, no, we want to use your essence, your humanity, your creativity to make something. And they're starting to get back into touch of who they are as human beings. And so surely a lot of people who, who come to work with you must have mixed feelings about making art and feeling creatively empowered. How do you handle someone who comes in and says, no way, I'm not an artist, this is crazy? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, inmates want to do artwork, mm -hmm. right? Because inside a prison, there's a hierarchical structure built in, right? 
the person who can create is considered one of the highest levels because they have something tradable. They can do a drawing, they can do the design a handkerchief, they can do a tattoo that they can then trade for cigarettes, that they can then have somebody take that art piece and send it home to a loved one to show how much they care because they really don't have much of anything else. So the inmates have this one concept of what art is. Now that's not what my concept is, mm -hmm. but who am I to tell them otherwise? Yeah. If that gets them into my session. And so the notion that they rec recognize the value of the art as a tradable commodity, and then once I have them sitting down and they're doing this work, and they're not doing the work that resembles a tattoo or an envelope or a handkerchief, but they're doing real, true expression, they don't want to leave. They want to use you, they want to use your time, and they know you're there to help them. You're not wearing green. Mm -hmm. So they know that you're there to volunteer, to be present with them. And the minute you accept an art piece from them, you validate who they are. And that's something new to them. And as far as the future of art therapy in prison specifically, what, what changes do you hope to see, or what are you working on? What changes are happening? Like? Oh my god. Yeah. You know, because the awareness of the work that we're doing is, is becoming so much more. And when we have administrators who understand and recognize, uh, you know, uh, philosophically how valuable the art making is and how rich it is to keep it a safer environment, keep it a healthier environment, and give them a sense of identity that makes recidivism um, less likely, but also pragmatically to realize how much less expensive it is to use art therapy instead of medication using us instead of solitary confinement. And when they realize pragmatically this is effective, then they start inviting us in. And that is happening.